Hello, I am Vigri and welcome to my video series about how to fly in X-Plane. In today's introductory video I would like to walk you through the topics that I plan to cover in the future videos. But before we get to that, let me give you a brief overview about my own personal aviator's history. I have about five years of experience with both virtual flying in X-Plane as well as real world flying. And while I really haven't tracked the countless hours spent in uh, explain I have logged each and every minute spent in real aircraft and to date I have about 120 hours of flight time and I have successfully completed 276 real world landings and in this video series I would like to share some of my observations and experience uh, to teach you how to precisely and smoothly uh, pilot an aircraft in a simulator. Uh, next I would like to list the items that I am not going to talk about, just to get the expectations right. So I am not going to talk about flight planning or pre-flight procedures. I am also not going to talk about navigation and automation as I am not going to use any kind of autopilot or flight management system. And I'm also not going to uh, cover the piloting of the jet aircrafts. Uh, so this leaves us with uh, basic stick and rudder skills used to fly small general aviation aircrafts like this Cessna 172 uh, we have here. Uh, so what I am going to talk about then. Uh, the very next video will be all about setting up the controls. And for that I am going to walk you through the settings and joystick and equipment dialog uh, which is used to calibrate and uh, set up all the things related to controls. Uh, uh, while the axes and perhaps buttons basic and buttons advanced uh, tabs are not too complicated and do not require a lot of time to cover the majority of the time in the next video will be spent in the Null Zone tab. The uh, Null Zone tab is used to uh, specify the responsiveness and the feeling of the controls or how the aircraft in a simulator responds to the control inputs that you make. And uh, I will uh, explain how to uh, fine-tune all the sliders in this dialogue. And also I will uh, do a couple of test flights and show you how to actually test these uh, settings and how to make sure that the fine-tuning is uh, done correctly. Uh, after the uh, controls have been calibrated and all the, se all the sensitivity uh, set up correctly, then it is time to move on to other topics. For that I think it is better if we take off and then I can show you the uh, items on the fly. So let's uh, sit into the aircraft which is currently cooled and dark and start it up. Uh, let's set the master switch on, uh, then add a tiny little bit of throttle uh, and engage the starter and add some mixture and the engine starts just fine. Uh, oil pressure, oil temperature is ok. Next uh, set the avionics switch to on position. Uh, very good, now release the brakes, uh, set the flaps to 10, mixture is rich and full throttle and off we go. Uh, of course one of the uh, videos will be about how to take off with an aircraft, how to use rudder to keep the aircraft uh, going down the center line and at what speed to actually pull <coughs> the nose up and take off uh, and also what is the correct uh, climb speed and uh, why it is important to maintain your position over the runway in the initial climb out phase. But before we get to that there are more important topics to cover. Ok, 
Okay, we have reached 300 feet above ground level. Time to raise the flaps and let's turn to the left to crosswind leg. Uh, there is a saying that uh, one task we pilots have is to make flying look easy. Uh, I can tell you one thing. Flying is easy if you know where to look. And uh, in this video series uh, I want to teach you when and where to look at during various uh, stages of flight. Uh, as I am going to teach you the flight in visual conditions as we have right here, uh, then uh, I have access to high precision uh, attitude indicator which is the natural horizon. And one of the main tasks for the visual pilot is to actually uh, look outside and put the horizon into the correct position uh, on the windshield uh, in order to uh, establish aircraft on a desired flight path. Uh, for example, if we combine a proper amount of uh, power with uh, a certain amount of airspeed and put the horizon in the correct place on the windshield then we end up uh, flying straight and level as we are doing right now uh, and once the correct position for the horizon is found uh, then it is uh, good to trim the aircraft so that the uh, position of the horizon can be maintained over extended period of time uh, and uh, the trimming procedure in a simulator is somewhat more difficult than it actually is in a real aircraft uh, so it is uh, very essential to uh, have the skill to properly trim and during the straight and level flight lesson I will teach both uh, how to efficiently and quickly find the correct position for the horizon and how to trim the aircraft uh, for straight and level flight. Uh, but horizon uh, can also use for other things than only uh, establishing proper vertical speed. Uh, for example, uh, when uh, I am currently in the uh, right turn, then in addition to keeping the airplane flying level, I use the horizon for also establishing a correct bank angle. Uh, the technique is that uh, first you set the bank angle with the horizon and then you verify it with a bank angle indicator on the dashboard. Uh, and this uh, technique is uh, not only uh, used for turning, it is actually used for all uh, the stages of flight uh, where the uh, horizon is the main instrument and uh, all the other instruments on the dashboard are for uh, cross-checking and verification. Um, but in addition to vertical speed and bank angle, the horizon can also be used for setting the correct uh, indicated airspeed. Uh, for example, if I uh, go to climb here, put the full power, then the horizon allows me to set the proper climb speed. Uh, the higher I raise the nose, uh, the slower the aircraft goes, or uh, depending on where I put the horizon on the windshield, it will determine the indicated airspeed. If I, for example, lower the nose, then the indicated airspeed will increase. If I will pull the nose up again, then the indicated airspeed will decrease and the horizon will help me do this. Uh, of course, in addition to uh, uh, climbing, I can use horizon to uh, put myself in, uh, into proper descent. And uh, again, I use the horizon to set the proper vertical speed and also indicated speed. And if I combine it with a bank angle, then I can use uh, horizon to establish a nice turning descent. Uh, so horizon can be used in all stages of flight and should be used. 
uh, and uh, this is the main thing I want to teach you that for Visual Pilot the Horizon is the main instrument to fly by and all the other instruments on the dashboard are only for uh, validation and verification purposes another thing that I want to cover uh, is the proper operation of flaps uh, because sometimes uh, some pilots uh, might think that uh, when you extend the flaps the ballooning effect uh, is inevitable uh, but actually this is not the case uh, if you know the forces at play then you would be able to compensate accordingly uh, and the uh, ability to <coughs> extend flaps without devi any deviation in altitude should be essential for example currently we are flying at 1000 feet about 95 knots and flaps zero uh, and if I now extend the flaps then then it is possible to continue flying without almost any deviation in uh, uh, vertical speed and also we are still on 1000 feet altitude, so altitude didn't change. So this kind of flaps operation is very essential for smooth and precise piloting. And it is essential that uh, uh, flaps operation uh, should uh, produce no deviation in already established flight path. Uh, the next thing I want to cover uh, is the stalling. Uh, while the stallings uh, are useful for learning how to handle aircraft in low air speeds and how to actually recover the stalls, uh, my purpose is to show you the uh, interesting uh, relation between stalls and landings. Uh, because if you are able to put the aircraft into stall without any deviation in altitude uh, then uh, this procedure actually resembles pretty much the process of flaring that you are doing during the landing and uh, the practicing uh, stalling helps you to build up the necessary muscle memory without uh, danger of smashing the aircraft against the ground. So I will uh, show you a few uh, exercises that you can practice to uh, try out and improve your flaring skills. So after we have uh, covered the straight and level flights, turnings, climbs, also trimming, descents uh, and flaps operation and stalls, then we have enough uh, knowledge uh, so that we can shoot our first approach. Uh, approach contains uh, basically two uh, things or two stages. First is to go through the base leg and after base leg there is the uh, final leg. While uh, flying base leg is nothing more than just the um, uh, descent uh, at certain vertical speed and uh, correct heading uh, then uh, final leg is a bit more complicated and requires uh, somewhat more effort to master. Uh, during final uh, the pilot has uh, quite many tasks. First the pilot must uh, keep the airplane flying along the extended center line of the runway. Uh, second, the pilot must uh, establish the proper airspeed during the final. And third, the pilot must make sure that the airplane ends uh, up uh, at the uh, correct place, preferably on the runway, uh, which means that the pilot must aim the aircraft to the proper place. Uh, okay, let's turn to the final now and let's see how it goes okay the runway is there we managed to end up on the final and actually i am already aiming the aircraft to the 
uh, threshold of the runway. Uh, you might ask that how do I know that the aircraft ends up uh, at the uh, uh, runway threshold. Uh, actually there is a surprising connection between uh, straight at level flying uh, and uh, final approach and I will reveal it when the time is right. Uh, once the um, aircraft is over the threshold it is time to start the flaring process but we have uh, learned it already in the stalling process so the next stage and the next skill is to actually land the aircraft and this requires a pretty good uh, estimation of the ground proximity and this again requires that you look at the correct place and uh, this is the skill that I want to uh, teach you during the landing and I have planned some uh, pretty cool ground proximity training exercises that you can practice so this uh, landing uh, uh, concludes our uh, introduction video and also uh, concludes and covers the scope of the uh, video series uh, and uh, I hope uh, that you will find this video series interesting and also useful and uh, this video series will help to improve your flying skills somewhat uh, so thank you for watching and hope to see you already in the next video where I will cover the uh, hardware calibration. Okay, bye for now.